Sister Sarah Cavanaugh, it's a privilege to be with you today. Thank you. And your religious name was Sister Michael Henry. Henry. And that's long gone. Right. <laughs> a long time. That was uh, my uh, brother and my father's name. Beautiful. Yes. I ha frequently have to stop because I want to call you Sally since our trip together on the lands of Dominic. Right. So tell me why we don't hear Sally more often. Well, I was uh, Sally at home. And um, however I was baptized Sarah, you can't baptize somebody with Sally. Because it wasn't a saint's name. Right. Yet. And so, uh, but, but I was called, um, you know, Sally at home and in school. And uh, when I came here, our priors said, was not pleased with Sally and that I should be called Sarah. So I like Sarah. Uh, mm -hmm. I use Sarah as mm -hmm. my professional name. You know, I sign uh, things Sarah, but I don't turn away when people call me Sally. <laughs> Do your nieces and nephews call you Sally? Yes. Aunt Sally or just Sally? Uh, Aunt Sally. Aunt Sally. Yes. <laughs> That's well. The name Sarah is beautiful too. It is. It's a right. strong biblical, biblical name. I know you're currently assisting in the literacy here, the um, Adrian Ray Literacy yes. Center, R E A. Right. What, what does that stand for? Uh, well, the Adrian Ray Literacy Center is, um, you know, the the name that was uh, chosen. And um, actually we got money from uh, Rita Ray's family. And so that's why we kept the, the Ray. Mm -hmm. And um, actually uh, Marie Shane Line, uh, my partner at that time, had been um, the one that started our literacy center program in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And uh, she certainly um, extended it to other places uh, and was uh, very successful. And so when um, our current uh, prioress uh, knew she was um, coming into Adrian, she asked her to start a center here. And, and then she asked if I would help. So that's how I got involved with the Literacy Center as a helper. Had you known Marie Shainer earlier in your life? Marie Shaneline and I are in the same crowd. And uh, we had lived together uh, also at St. Rose of Lima in Miami. Uh, Marie was, um, she taught first grade, but she also taught Latin. And I taught, um, fourth and seventh and eighth, you know, when I was there. Well, and wasn't she smart to snatch you? Because you had 10 years teaching and several years in an administration. I don't know if I can count them all, but at least 18 that I know of. Yes. Yes. Uh, tell me this. Um, how did she, did she get on her knees to invite you to join her here at the New Literacy Center in Adrian? Well, we, we were, uh, I had already left Barry after 20 years uh, in an administrator there. And, uh, and she had decided to leave Detroit. And so we, that's when we uh, decided to take a road trip across the country. And also um, we visited Alaska at that time. And then we went all the way down uh, through California, you know, farther south to um, a place where we were going to uh, do a retreat, a private, well, it was a group retreat actually uh, there. And, and so all of that, you know, driving across the country 
and having the retreat and so on. Um, even though we had left in um, late June, um, we got back here uh, close to August when um, Marie had already set up a meeting of people that were working in literacy centers in other parts of the country um, as we, you know, planned. And so um, it was an interesting uh, beginning of the literacy center. You know, we had um, a room that uh, we were going to start, but we had to get furniture, we had to get equipment, uh, all those things. Uh, and however, Marie was um, a very capable leader. She worked magic. Yes, yes, she did. And, um, and that's one of the reasons why the literacy center that we have sponsored all over the country mm -hmm. with our sisters. Uh, Marie really deserves credit for that. What, was this a good change for you after 20 years at Barry? Well, it was a total change, yes. but um, I uh, felt that I enjoyed doing it. Uh, it didn't, you know, it took me a while because a lot of what I was doing was uh, administrative kinds of things. In the beginning, I took care of the records, you know, I took care of um, managing, you know, the rooms themselves mm -hmm. and the materials. Mm -hmm. What did you do at Barry, uh, Sarah? At Barry, I was uh, an associate vice president for institutional advancement. Wow, and, that's a mouthful. Well, and actually, uh, I, I worked under one of the vice presidents. And so um, uh, a lot of what I was doing was fundraising for scholarships. It was uh, plan giving. It was um, sponsoring, you know, like the ball and the golf tournament. And uh, there was a women's club, you know, that I work with. So, um, and the, our president, Gina Lachlan, was a personal friend of mine for a long time. Uh, before I uh, took that job, and actually it was at her invitation uh, that I went after I had been a uh, principal at Regina Dominican High School. And so um, it was wonderful being there. I ha well, I had lived in Florida. Actually, I had gone to uh, Barry when I taught at St. Rose of Lima and I lived, you know, right there near Barry, so mm -hmm. I was familiar with the place mm -hmm. and and the climate and so on. So, so you're a fair witness to see the growth, to have witnessed the growth at Barry University. Yes, it's it certainly, you know, continued to get larger and larger. And um, at that time, we had many sisters that were on the staff and uh, it had been, um, you know, G Sister Gina Lachlan was not the first president, um, but she was a very capable lady. Um, Jean had a job in the West uh, that was similar to the job that I had in Detroit and also, um, uh, we had uh, a friend uh, that had a similar job in the Chicago area, Georgina oh Lesnicki. <laughs> and the three of us had, we used to come together uh, and strategize what we were going to do when we would go back to our jobs. So I had worked, you know, for a long time with Gina Lachlan and uh, being then able to work with her at uh, Barry yes. was, um, you know, really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is the three of you remain friends today. Right. Yes. Right. 
Georgina and Jean and I. Uh, Georgina's and, here at the D Dominican Life Center. And, yes, yes, And she not is. too far away is Jean down the street a bit. Yeah, right <laughs> now she uh, she comes back and forth mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. from Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, but she is the uh, the kind of person that just continues to to do good things. And, I'm wondering if you did not uh, develop a deep relationship with the alumni while you in the position that you had in uh, fundraising. Mm -hmm. Well, I did at the time, but um, it was, um, you know, because they were the source of uh, income. And there was also uh, a woman's club there that met every month. And um, so they c would come to Barry and yes. have have a program or lunch they, or something. They would have a monthly <laughs> meeting, and they also sponsored uh, different events mm -hmm. like uh, lunch clubs and and so on. But when I was um, doing that job, the alumni and people that were on the board or that were friends of Barry, those were certainly people that I communicated with, um, you know, as I was doing my job. But it's not... Um, you didn't go knocking on doors, no, so to speak. No, yes. I did not go knocking on doors. And um, most of the fundraising was connected to events. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I wasn't the only one that was in touch with um, the people that had uh, been students at, at Barry. Uh, Sarah, who would you say uh, motivated you or inspired you <clears throat> to become or to give expression to the gifts you have as a teacher and also as an administrator? Where, from, from whence did that rise up in you? Well, I was fortunate to have Adrian Dominican sisters teach me for 12 years. <laughs> and so... Grade school, high school. <laughs> grade school and high school at St. Paul's in Gross Point. Oh. And, um, you know, I was really impressed um, by the jobs that they did. They were wonderful teachers. And, uh, Who was the principal at the time? Was it Sister Florentine? No. No. Uh, Genevieve was the last principal there. Genevieve Weber? Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you who, know, who and was the, the teacher that inspired you? Because certainly you emulated these women throughout your life. Well, <clears throat> When I was young, like in the second grade, Joan of Arc was oh. my teacher. And as I moved from second grade to third grade, I had uh, an event uh, that put me in the hospital. Uh, I almost died, you know, during that was ruptured appendix and obstruction of the bowels. And good old Joan of Arc and flooring trees, um, they would walk down from St. Paul's to the hospital where I was. And um, she, she just, uh, you know, remained a friend. Um, and when I entered, you know, we talk about having a sponsor. Joan of Arc was Wait, my sponsor was because I just said, kept in touch with her for a long time. She was a great lady and a good friend. And uh, Lord rest her soul, she's getting a reward now. <laughs> yes. Amen. Uh, who were your formation directors? Was it Sister uh, Mary Philip? No, it wasn't Mary Philip. Um, I think Rita Marie. Rita Marie. I mm -hmm. think Rita Marie was mm -hmm. uh, 
right, right off hand now, I haven't been thinking about them for may, a may while. May I ask while. your age? Pardon me? Do you dare tell me your age? I'm uh, 87. Oh, God bless you. Yes. Yes. So when I, I do forget a lot of things. When are you going to hang up your ruler and your lesson plans and your, your teacher certificates? Well, as long as I'm still able to do the job that I'm doing at the Literacy Center, uh, it's not that difficult. And it brings you joy. It brings me great joy. I usually go over there at about 7.30, and I open um, up the uh, center and get things organized in the various little cubicles mm -hmm. uh, where the tutoring is done. That's and at the um, former St. Joseph Academy, right? Right. In right. the lower it's, level. Uh, it's on the lower level because we we started the uh, center here in this um, part of the building that connects Maria and Regina. Mm -hmm. That's where the Literacy Center but started. But you outgrew that, as I recall. But we outgrew right. that. And the um, uh, area that we have now, which is at the lower level of the academy building, and uh, actually we um, we're the only one in the academy building for a while, but uh, now um, Siena Heights is in the process of getting it ready to use in the on the upper floors. We, one can't help but notice the construction trucks and other implements outside the building. Uh, can you hear them and what they are yes. supposedly one, uh, doing? One of the, mm. uh, the main things, uh, and it's not an easy job, and it's not very clear yet, but it has um, something to do with the uh, water and the electricity. And so there's different um, connections uh, that have to be worked on. But it is a very complicated, and the huge trucks that are out on our lawn right now, uh, it's not easy to understand. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't expect to understand, you know, <laughs> how to uh, do their job, but they've already had to make a connection uh, under the street. Um, right in front of the literacy center. Is there a hope that this uh, this building will be in good repair and renovation by September? It, they won't be using the entire building, there, mm -hmm. but they're gonna to start to use it. Um, as you know, Siena has continued to grow. Uh, they've built new, some other new buildings mm -hmm. Um, you know, they have new dormitories and, um, you know, they, fortunately they've been, you know, they have a football team now and teams and this is helping to uh, bring more students mm -hmm. and uh, they have a wonderful reputation. And uh, well, so- the nursing school too, the across nursing the street. School, yes, mm -hmm. there's a building right across the street now, you know, where nursing was, but uh, they offer many other um, programs that attract. Well, this uh, is credit to Sister Peg Albert, is it not? She has done mm -hmm. a marvelous yeah. job, and um, she worked with Sister uh, Jean O'Loughlin mm -hmm. when Jean was uh, president at Barry. Barry. And, um, and she worked with her for a, a long time, mm -hmm. so she certainly had wonderful experience mm -hmm. before coming here. Mm -hmm. And she continues to be an outstanding um, president. president. Yeah. Yes. Now may I take you down memory lane? Yes. What was life like being on the team of the Immaculate Conception province. That was, what, in the 60s? Yes. Well, I started out, um, after I finished 
uh, being principal in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, I started out by being a supervisor with Sister Rose William. And uh, we would uh, go from school to school. And it was mostly that kind of supervision that our sisters had had, you know, before. And so then uh, gradually, uh, because things were changing quite a bit at that time in schools, and then it was the first time uh, that we had elected um, provincial teams, a provincial team, mm -hmm. and I was on that team. And uh, when I was on that team, then um, I continued to uh, go from school to school and to uh, work with people uh, that were um, running. The, the elementary schools. Um, Were you, did you have your provincial quarters at St. Suzanne's? We started um, at St. Suzanne's, but then we moved to a very beautiful house on Boston Boulevard. Boston Boulevard. Boston Boulevard. <laughs> it was an excellent uh, facility, and another group of sisters had used it and they um, had um, established uh, a center where people could come for physical help. But um, we lived there uh, at that Boston Boulevard house um, for a while. And then we, um, I was trying to think of where we, um, whether we moved to, because I was at Rosary at the beginning. We were in the convent mm -hmm. at Rosary. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we moved to Boston Boulevard. And then, weren't I you think near the blessed? When we were at St. Suzanne's yeah. after that. After that. Yeah. Uh, weren't you near on Boston Boulevard, the uh, Blessed Sacrament Cathedral yes. in Detroit? Yes, <coughs> that was. Uh, you probably could walk there. You could, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, and we used to have meetings there, uh, you know, with our sisters. And however, um, I remember one time we had a meeting there and there were um, a, a great number of sisters that were there for the meeting. And um, one of our sisters, uh, Helen Sohn, in fact, mm -hmm. had um, gone uh, shopping with another person and when they were coming back to the front door of the convent um, and we were all busy inside, uh, Helen could see that there were some young men uh, that were, uh, they looked like they were going to be a problem <laughs> and so she and her partner you know, went to, to the front door and got in, and they just got the door slammed, and these boys came and uh, tried to get in the place, and um, everybody that was on the first floor, we ran upstairs into a place, and but we were able to call the police, and so the police did come, <laughs> and um, they, they got the people that, the young men that broke in. They, they, so. were, they were trying to get money or steal the television, perhaps. <laughs> well, you, you know, um, they expected, I guess, that anybody that lived in a house like that would would have um, money. So well, those were happy years for you, weren't they? They were really happy years, and I, um, I've enjoyed. Well, I've enjoyed my life all the way through, and I appreciate the opportunities I've had to move from one activity to another. And I thank God that I am still in good health, and I uh, continue to like what I'm doing. And it's wonderful living here on the Mother House campus. There's uh, so many 
opportunities uh, to meet other people, to attend programs um, that continue to be educational and enjoyable. Well, you've always impressed me as someone, what would be the phrase, that went with the flow. You never, you never um, seem to be a person who would be totally upset. No. And you probably learned that at home with your dear mother and father and brothers and sisters. And, um, I have seven brothers and sisters seven. and my mother and father who were excellent parents. Well, I think in the name of all the Adrian Dominicans, we should thank your mother and father for bringing you into existence. Mm -hmm. And I, I just am overwhelmed by the number of lives you have touched in your 87 years and certainly your years of teaching and administration. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, God. It's been good, <laughs> yes. and I am very grateful. And thank you yes. for taking time to uh, make myself and other people known. Yes, the life of our sisters. Right. Amen. <laughs>